Welcome back to the Linux Academy Nginx Deep Dive. In this video, we're going to get started looking at the configuration of Nginx. And if we really boil down what this course is going to be about, it's about tweaking configuration options and really understanding how we can make Nginx do what we want it to do. And to get started with that, we're going to look at the default configuration that Nginx comes with because that includes an overall server configuration and the very first virtual host that we're going to work with. So we're going to maybe make some modifications to that default virtual host, and we're going to see what the out-of-the-box settings are for the overall server. This video, along with most of the other videos throughout the rest of this course, are going to have us using the root user, because in order for us to edit files where they are by default to configure Nginx, we need to be the root user or use sudo. And then in order to interact with systemd, which we're going to use quite a bit, we also would need to be sudo. So if you want to see what user I'm using, you can check right here. This will tell you my host and the user I'm using, and it'll be root most of the time throughout this course. So we're going to change over to do that right now by doing sudo su, and then we're going to put a dash, and this will send us to the home directory for the root user. And now we can see that I am the root user, and we're going to go into the Etsy Nginx directory. The Etsy Nginx directory is going to be where all of the default files that came with Nginx, well, not all of them, there are some spread throughout the system where it makes sense, but this is where the configuration of Nginx is really going to happen. And the main server configuration happens in nginx.conf, and then our virtual hosts are going to go into the conf.d directory into .conf files within here. But we're going to see how that works in just a second, and we're going to start by taking a look at etchy nginx nginx.conf. And we're going to go through and kind of learn what's going on with this particular file. So to get started with nginx, we need to kind of understand where we're working, and that's the, the context of things. You can see that events has these curly braces afterward and some indented content underneath, and that means that this worker connections line is in the context of the events directive is what that's called. So this is going to be, you're going to see the words directive and the word context quite a bit when we go and look through the documentation. So that's one thing to note is that some of the directives we use have their own content blocks. So they have context. And then others like user up here, this is just a single directive and it's working on the main context. So it's outside of the scope of something like HTTP or events. And if we kind of just go from top to bottom within this file, we're going to see that the user is set to Nginx and this is a system user. It's not one that we're going to be able to sudo into, but this is the default user that the child processes are going to run as or the worker processes. Worker processes gives us the number of processes to use, and currently it's set to one by default. This is one of those particular pieces that you can modify based on the server that you're running this on to get the most performance out of Nginx. As we continue, air log specifies the log file that you want to use, and then the log level that you want to use. And the last of the top level contexts are going to be the PID. So PID specifies the file that you would like to hold on to the process identifier for Nginx as the server is running. And everything else in this file is going to fall within a context of some kind. The events context is required. So if we did not have this in here, we would get an error that you, we couldn't actually run Nginx if this didn't exist. All of these up here are actually optional and you don't need to specify them for the most bare bones configuration of Nginx, but you do need to have events. This can be empty, and you don't have to actually specify anything in here, but it is necessary. And what events does is it's a context that allows us to configure how connections are handled to our worker processes. And in this particular case, we're setting worker connections to 1024, and that means every individual worker process at any point can have 1024 clients connected to it. Given that we only have one worker process here and a connection limit of 1,024, if we happen to have 1,025 simultaneous connection attempts, 1,024 of them would actually be able to make a connection, but one of them would have to wait until a connection opened up. From here, we're going to continue down, and I'm going to get the HTTP section in its entirety, but HTTP lets us specify the configuration of the HTTP handling of Nginx, Nginx can handle more than just HTTP is, is one thing we are going to learn throughout this. But for the most part, that's what we're going to use it for. I'm going to bring up and that you can use it in order to work with as a mail server if you wanted to. But 
for the most part, this entire course is going to be focused on using it as a web server and as a reverse proxy and as a load balancer because that's really how Nginx is used in real-world use. But as we go down here, we can see that there's this call to include, and what this will do is it takes another configuration file of some kind, and it's basically going to take all of the configuration from within this file and kind of just expand it into this particular context. This is what allows us to divide out our virtual hosts into separate files, even though in reality we need them all to fall under an HTTP context. But we can load them in and not really worry about where they happen. In this particular case, we're going to move all of the MIME type definitions, which is file types and the associated content types that browsers need for those, we're going to move those into their separate file, and we can actually open this file if we wanted to take a look at it by doing colon E, and then it's going to be in MIME types as a file. So you can see here that there is a types directive that has context, and then you can see that text HTML is a type, and that's the type that we're going to return if a file ends in HTML, HTM, or SHTML. Text CSS is the type we should use for CSS files. So this is how Nginx knows based on the type of file that we're serving up what context type to return to the user. We can switch back to our previous buffer using bn if you're following along in vim. So that allowed us to take that entire types context, move it into a separate file so we didn't really clutter up this file. And that's the real value of includes is it lets us break our things into reusable chunks potentially or into chunks that make sense. So MIME types kind of make sense to be all grouped together. We're going to put them in a separate file. Default type will state if it's not defined in the MIME types file for the type of file that we're serving up, we should use application octet stream for that, and that's totally fine. If we look at directives in general, you'll notice that it's a directive name. This is kind of like a function, um, and it has a list potentially of arguments, and it's always going to end in a semicolon. Continuing down the file, if we look at the log format directive, this is going to take a string that defines how we're going to put the information that is variable from a request into a log format. So when somebody actually accesses our server, we're going to put it in the access log, which that's what the access log directive does. It lets us specify the file we want all access to the server to be logged to. But then this string defines the information that we actually want to log into that file. And everything that starts with a dollar sign is going to be a variable of some kind that we're going to have access to from within Nginx. Later on, we're going to utilize these quite a bit as we modify headers and as we do things like rewrites and redirects. And I will show you how to figure out what all of these variables are and what the actual options that you have are for other variables, because there are quite a few more than just what we see here in a later video when we actually go through and kind of work on logging and do the redirects. But just know that this is how the default log format is going to be specified for the access log. We only have a few more to go through here, but send file, we're going to set this to on. And what this will do is actually allow it to use the send file system call to deliver content. And this will give you a performance gain in some situations, and there are other situations where it will not. And we'll talk about those later on when we talk about improving the performance of Nginx. But now we get to see our first comment in an Nginx config. It's going to be using a hash sign or a pound sign or an octothorpe, depending on what you call it. But yeah, so TCP no push is commented out. We'll talk about this a little bit later. But as we continue on, we'll see these sort of comments, and we'll use these as we document things that are going into the virtual host files that we're working with. Keep alive timeout specifies how many seconds we should keep a connection open before we recycle it, and it goes back into the connection pool. Gzip is going to be some compression that we're going to talk about later on when we talk about improving the performance of Nginx, but you can specify it whether it's on or off. And then lastly, the probably the most important line of this entire thing is going to be another include statement that looks in the conf.d file and then loads in every file that ends in a .conf. And what this allows us to do is break up all of the virtual host server configurations that we want to have into separate files so that they're logical and they make sense, and we can have them all separated. And also the default.conf is going to exist inside of this directory too.
and then it will load all of those things in when the server is started. And we don't really need to come in here and modify the nginx.com file at all unless we want to change settings that would affect everything kind of globally. We're going to spend most of our time in this course inside of files that are located in the conf.d directory, but it's good for us to know how the overall server is configured. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a default.conf, not by actually looking at the file that's there, but by deleting the file and building up an entirely new default.conf that allows us to understand every single line that it takes to build the simplest possible HTTP server for a virtual host.